Okay, so we're talking about double-minded Christianity. So this is Elijah on Mount Carmel challenging the prophets of, of Jezebel. Now, these were prophets, right? But we articulate prophets as being prophets of God, right? But there were other prophets of other gods. So, I mean, there was a counter, right? There was a double standard, even though prophets are really people who come from God. But how does someone else have prophets when prophets are something that's exclusively to God? D- d- double-mindedness, right? That's why I said, how long will you stack between two opinions? You call yourself prophets, but you're not truly a prophet because you're not of God. Does it make sense? But they call themselves prophets. Do you see? How can you be a prophet if of something else when you're not a prophet of God? There's no such thing. But it exists not because God ordained it, so because man has chosen, you know, oh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna speak for this God that makes sense to me. That I can touch, that I can see, that I can resonate with, that 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 I can control. That's my God. I don't need a God telling me stuff that I can't see and I can't tell what to do and know if it's real or not. And I'm second guessing anymore. That causes me anxiety. So this is just easier to do. Yeah. Cause that's why I'm fucked. Cause cause I'm a baby. Think about it. The Bible says that the fivefold ministry it brings to a place of maturity that we be no longer babies, children tossed to and fro. Think about what he's trying to say in in Ephesians four. Uh, the Apostle Paul, meaning when you're a baby, you put everything in your mouth. With the shoe, goes in your mouth. Cockroach, goes in your mouth. Knife, goes in your mouth. Plate, goes in your mouth. Animal, goes in your mouth. And that's when you're a baby in Christ, anything you hear, you just, you just put it in your spirit. So when true sound doctrine comes, you don't receive it. Because you receive it just like everything else. How long will you wait between two opinions? Do you see? When you're baby in Christ, you, 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 you just take on everything. You go to every conference, listen to every YouTube video, listen to every person who says they are pastor, prophet, or whatever, and you just shove it in your mouth. And you're sick. Do you see? Does that make sense? That's none of us in here, but we know a lot of people like that, right? <laughs> because as a baby, you don't know any better. And so whoever gains the mastery with you as a child, that's who you tend to believe. And that's that's your whole bias, your whole life. So if you know a pastor and they were abusive to their people in the church and knowing that I'm a pastor, you're immediately going to associate me with with trying to abuse you. Even though I'm not, you will read anything that I'm trying to do as a setup to abuse you. Does that mean because I'm a pastor? And so when somebody invites you somewhere and says something, oh, I'm not going over there. I'm not doing any you know, pastors. They just want your money. They just want. So if I say, guys, you want to give off? Oh, there it is. Offering. Got to go. <laughs> well, who do you think paying for all of this? <laughs> you know, ministry is not free. It costs somebody something to bring these free messages to you. Yeah. Judas cared the money. Jesus had offerings. And somebody built the church. Right. But people had this mindset, this bias that, oh, if it's God, it shouldn't cost me nothing. No, it's costing somebody something. <laughs> it says freely you receive, freely you get. That means somebody paid to give you that for free, but it wasn't free. You see, but we don't want to change our mindsets. We feel like everything should be catered to the way we feel. Do you see, no matter what, what someone's trying to tell us, we just strongly feel this way. But it keeps you stuck. It keeps you not making progress. It keeps you always talking about what the devil is doing to you. Because yeah. you have not matured. Out of, you are in that playground with the devil still. You haven't gotten on the sandbox and grown up. Do you know why I don't talk about the devil? Because I'm not in the same place where he is. He don't bother me in my sleep. He don't torment me in my body. And when he does, I, de- I deal with it. You're all these little preachers out here. The devil this, the devil that, the devil man is attacking. <laughs> You don't hear me talk that way. I deal with it. I don't make him part of my conversation. The Bible says we're seated with him in heavenly places. Satan's not there. Do you see? So when you're always constantly bringing up Satan, it's because of where you function. You're too low. He's underneath your feet. So that means you're, you're hanging out down here somewhere instead of being up here with God. You're too conscious of this stuff. Does that make sense? What sense does it make for a pastor going underneath his shoe for conversations in power and authority when he's got when he has it right here with Christ? Seeking fortune tellers and witchcrafts and all that stuff like that. You're going underneath your feet for power. Doesn't make any sense. Why would I fear somebody walking in witchcraft and stuff? I don't. I'm with God. 
<laughs> Does that make sense? But our feelings tell us, oh, well, you don't want to talk about the devil like that. Whoa, whoa. It's because where are you functioning? Does that make sense? So when we're babies, that's the way we act. We put everything in our mouth. And John talks about this in the latter epistles, you know, and it's in the first, second, and third John. He talks about children in faith, young people in faith, and then fathers in faith. Does that make sense? Y'all remember reading that? Okay. So we got to understand that, guys. Um, but he said to them, how long will you wait between two opinions? How long? Like, what else does God have to do to get you to make your mind up about serving him wholeheartedly? Do you see? What do you need more miracles? You need more. What did, what does God have to do to get you to convince you again of what you say you believe? Mm -hmm. That's a feeling based thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's like you start out. OK, God did this. So I know if he wants me to do that, he'll show me that again. But why does he have to do that Amen. when you already seen it? You didn't see him die on the cross. But can't nobody tell you that Jesus didn't die for your sins, even though you didn't see it. Right. Nobody can tell you that Jesus didn't do what he did. But yet it was 2000 years ago. None of us was remote. Our great 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 parents. What he no one of us would even over there during that time. <laughs> but you can't tell us that it didn't happen. But yet when something you can't experience, you doubt it, you fight it, you double minded about it. You can't receive it. Mm. Do you see that? See the nature of that? And you know why you believe so strongly? Because you've heard it so much. You believe so strongly what Jesus did on the cross because you've heard it your whole life. That's why. Been meditating on it. Not saying it didn't happen, but I'm saying you believe it so sure because it's being reinforced your whole life. Mm -hmm. But the things of the spirit that you can experience have not been reinforced as much. So that's why your faith wavers when it comes to those things because you haven't heard it as much. Amen. You've heard about salvation, but you haven't heard about the miracles working in your life as much. Yeah. There's been something you've been told to hope and wait for, to experience, just like your salvation at any time. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Yes. So you believe in Jesus, but oh, I don't. I'm not sure if he wants to heal me. I don't know because. I've been dealing with this. I prayed. I, I don't know. That's feeling. But somebody tell you, are you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. Yeah, you died on the cross. Were you there? I, it happened. Were you there? It happened. Do you see? Because that's been reinforced. Do you see? And that, that, that can be true about anything. You see where I'm going? Yeah. So, thank you waiting on God, but he's really waiting on you. And he's waiting on you to grow up. <laughs> Who can be trusted with true riches? Does that make sense? So double minded it. Being double minded. So what is being double minded? It is really inconsistent. It's just being inconsistent. That's really what it is. Uh, so it's when we hold two distinct thoughts that are inconsistent with one another. That's what being double minded is in a nutshell. It's when you hold two distinct thoughts that are inconsistent with each other. The positive, negative, the yin and yang, or whatever. It's something you can find that's a good thing, but then you can find this counter to neutralize it. Right? It's like, I, uh, I want to work out, but healthy food is so expensive. So what we do? We go eat fast food and complain about our health and our weight. And take minutes. <laughs> Double-minded. See, when you don't make a decision, you end up becoming a victim of something because you choose not to choose. So choices are made for you. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, we can tell ourselves anything to do what we really feel instead of what we're supposed to do. Right. Double minds. Right. So, for example, I love my spouse, but I want a divorce. Right. We dealt with that. I've been there. Right. Yeah, why? Not because I don't love my wife, because what's going on? The situation has changed. I'm speaking my feelings, really. Does that make sense? But then if I don't get a hold of that, all I'm thinking about is divorce. My strong code now is divorce, divorce, divorce. So I'm thinking just showing up, I'm doing that person a favor because I'm not saying I want a divorce, but yet my mind said it's divorce. The strong code back of my mind is divorce, 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 divorce. You see? But on the outside, I'm like, no, I love my wife, and I'm happy in my marriage, and I'm not. Ah. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> Come on. We don't deal with that? Y'all yeah. know how real I am in here. Don't get quiet on me. 
Y'all know how real I am. See, this is your problem. You're not honest with yourself. Because you know what you're supposed to feel, but you really don't feel like that, but you don't want to tell anybody, so you end up in depression. Because you're afraid of what somebody's going to think and say about you and feeling that way, being a Christian. Get free. Because the only way you can change is by being honest. The Bible says confess your what? Faults to one another so that you may be what? Share it. Talk to somebody spiritually mature who's not going to misjudge you. Instead of keeping that to yourself, well, I, don't, well I, I, I need help with this, but if I tell, you know, Pastor Eric that, I don't know what he's going to think about me. Eric, Pastor Eric is not your God. So it don't matter what Pastor Eric thinks. You got to get free of this. Or are you going to stay in the enemy's playground? The enemy gets closer and closer and closer to you when you think like that. Okay? Like with Peter, right? Double-minded. He said, you're the Christ. And then God started telling Jesus, started telling him all those other things, and he said, no, no, this is not going to happen. Excuse me? You just told me I was the Messiah. So that means that everything I tell you, you need to listen to 100%. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen, Lord. Get thee behind me, Satan. Yep. Yep. Now your thoughts are back on the thoughts of men and thoughts of God. Yeah, the same person heard from God was hearing from Satan. Do you see? It can happen to any of us. And that's why Peter knew better than anyone, beware of your adversary of the devil, because he walks around as a lion devouring who he can. Meaning when you have a mindset that's an enmity against God, not knowing or, knowing or not, he's, 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 he's on the horizon. Yeah. So do you understand? So it's not just the devil just striking you and attacking you. You have to be in a place, in a mindset, in an area where he can get to you. Yeah. So the reason why I talk the way I talk because I'm not in the area where Satan can get to me. Yeah. Do you see? I understand how he operates. Like I said this morning in our prayer, I know what's really going on, and I'm not giving in to that. I see it. And he's waiting for me to take offense, open the door so he can come in. And I'm not taking it. I clearly see it. Do you see? And you got to be like that, guys. You got to be on guard and watch. Not fearfully, but with wisdom. But understand that he's always on the prowl. He's walking around out there just rummaging the lands, looking for who he can devour, just like he did with Job. He had been looking to and fro on the earth. Looking for someone. And God said, have you considered my servant, Job? Yeah. And he was like, Job, Job. Oh, yeah, that guy. You got a hedge protection around him. I can't touch him. He's so blessed. Yeah, I'm swear if you let me strike him, he'll curse you. Do you see? But he couldn't touch Job because Job had a what? A hedge protection. Do you see? You got to understand what you really have from God. Do you understand? Awesome. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. So what are some examples of... What were we double-minded about? I want to quit my job, but how would I make money if I quit? Right? <laughs> right, Timmy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to travel the world, but the porn virus is spreading everywhere. So... <laughs> Come on. Oh, the man of God. What'd you say? What'd you say, man of God? About the, about the, about, about the coronavirus earlier? Come on, man. That's the worst. He's made his mind up. So guess what? Even if the even if the virus hits his body, that's going to be his confession. So that's what faith is. It's a substance things hoped for and everything's not seen. So when sickness is my body, I'm not confessing sickness. Yes, I acknowledge in common sense that I'm sick, but I don't agree with it. Amen. I don't agree with it. So I'm like, <coughs> by a strike, I'm healed. <coughs> <coughs> Buy a strike some here. <coughs> Buy a strike some here. Then I add some fasting to it. Yeah. Do you see? I dig in deeper. Yeah. Yeah. You see? And even at the doctor's office, I'm still saying, "Buy his stripes, I'm healed." Hold fast your confessions of what? Faith. Faith. We gotta stop wavering when things go beyond what we believe and expect. Doesn't mean that you're being tested. It says no weapon fashion against yourself prosper, meaning it'll hit you, but it's not going to accomplish that which you were sent to do. Amen. 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 No weapon. It won't prosper. It won't succeed. Just because you're being attacked doesn't mean it's going to succeed. That's up to you. Jesus gave you his authority, right? To do what? To trample, to do what? To stump all the. That means you've been engaged with the devil. So come with some fighting. That's the reason why you have his authority. Does that make sense? Don't forget that, guys. You know, I do drugs, but drugs is bad for my health, right? You, you know, we have all of these positive and negative. So what are some bias that we have? What are some, what is, what are some double-minded stuff that we have? Yes. I don't like smoking, but I smoke. Okay, that's one. What's another one? 
give my money, but I don't know if God's gonna supply my needs. Oh, that's a good one. Good. What's another one? What's another one? I need to lose weight, but I like sugar. <laughs> that is all. We already come to the altar on now, right, Giselle? <laughs> I think about going to Brahms right now. <laughs> yes, sweetheart. I like my face not without makeup. You like your face not without makeup. That's good. Anybody else? Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, Terry. I want to serve God, but I'm not willing to give up my own life. Hallelujah. Amen. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's true, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. See, but well, we don't bring these things up. We keep putting it on God and other people. Well, Pastor Eric comes around, gives me a word, hugs me, tells me exactly all these different things. Then I'll know. Then when it happens, you still resist. Because <laughs> it really wasn't about that. Do you see? Right, Mike? <laughs> What's another one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want to be a house husband. That's me. <laughs> no, no, that's me too. No, no. My wife and I are double-minded about that. We're fighting for who to stay at home. Who is to? Well, she had, we actually both work from home. That's funny. <laughs> you tired? I'm more tired. What's it? Occupado? Occupado? Is that right? I'm learning Spanish. Occupado. Well, occupado for me. Occupado for you, right? Busy. Busy. Oh, uh, cansado. So cansado for me and cansada for you, right? Is that tired for her and tired for me? All right. What's another one? Well, give it. Let's, where's the yin yang for that? Uh, feeling like I've given everything over to God and I trust Him with my life, but I fear when something comes. There you go. Very good, woman of God. What else? Come on, guys. This this is helping some people in here. I want to get this out because we're gonna do some exercises. Gonna break us out of this today. We're gonna be different today. We're not just gonna hear a good sermon. We're gonna we're gonna practice this today. Okay. Yes, sweetheart. I like people, but I don't like people. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. It did make sense to you, right, Lisa? Yes, Zach. Oh, Zach, this is going to be good. <laughs> yes. So that's the key thing. The key problem of double mind is because we, we, for everything that's pleasurable, we can think of the corresponding pain. So we want all the glory, no cost. Because God can do that. And he's God. And then we project this whole thing on God. And then when we don't see it, we avoid. But we keep looking. We avoid, but keep looking. We avoid. Is there any other way, God, said Jesus? God didn't say anything. Right? He asked him, what, three times? Is there any way? But let it not be my will, but even Jesus struggled with this at one time. You see? Look at the Apostle Paul. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to heal me. And what did he say? My grace is sufficient for you. You already have what you need. Okay, but you're my healer and I'm sick. I heard that, but that's not what I expected because you heal. So I'm sick. Heal me. <laughs> my grace is sufficient for you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Ow. Still sick. Yep. Heal me, God. You're my healer. By stripes I'm healed. Hallelujah. My grace. Do you see? Yep. He's trying to grow you up. <laughs> And if God don't tell you, it's like what Jesus told, I was talking to, to, to Michael Barker, the man of God, the other day about Jesus tells the disciples, don't worry about your life. What are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? About this, about that. And they're like, so how are we getting paid, right? <laughs> How's this going to work? How do I explain this to my wife? Because he's not directly telling them what they need to hear to feel okay with what he's saying, even though they know he's the Messiah. That's us. Well, I heard God, but he didn't specifically say oh. on this day, this time, and then, 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 so therefore I'm still waiting for a word. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Do, you, do you see the rhetoric in what we do? We got all these qualifying things for someone who we say who was Lord and Savior of our lives. Yeah. And we stay stuck. And then we come to church frustrated, angry, arms all folded up because we're avoiding pain. <laughs> Well, God knows me, and God ain't said nothing. I've been here a year, I ain't got a word yet. Oh, man, yeah. man, man. He gets everybody 10, he gets his person 10 words, and this person 15 words. I got one, and I honestly don't know what it means. Huh? And you still haven't moved on it. You still haven't moved on it, right? Amen. 
Do you see? This, guys, we're crazy, okay? That's what our problem is. God's got some Looney Tunes kids, okay? And don't get all super religious on me. No, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I'm not declaring anything over you. I'm just telling the truth. We're crazy. Amen. But we're lovable. <laughs> but we're lovable, right? Right. So we also know that Jesus said in the Gospels that um, he teaches about double mindedness, right, when it comes to God and money, right? What did he say about God and money? Money and God. So we're trying to serve two masters. You despise one and hate the other. So there's pleasure and there's pain. You see? You ever tell somebody you, you love them but you hate them? Never? Yeah, my wife has never told me that. Ever, ever, Kathleen. Ever. Uh, Who's, who said that before about somebody? Okay, so who wants to explain that? What does that mean? What does that mean, Ricardo? What's the difference? Despise and hate. It's like the same. No, no, no. I'm saying who said they, they love someone but despise them or, you know, you love something but hate something. Why do, why do we say that, Ricardo? I guess we're frustrated. Ah, with what? No, with I'm frustrated because I'm not getting my way with you and I can't stand it because I still love you nonetheless. Yeah. Right? Yes, Andrew. You're just frustrated with their behavior. I love you as a person, uh -huh. as my spouse, as my kid, as whatever, my mother, but I'm really irritated by what you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> out in Jesus' name. <laughs> okay, who else? It yes, Ken. Right. That's good. That's really good. Yes, Tara. Anytime somebody challenges you to force a change in your behavior, then that makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. So you can develop this like friction that you're like, I don't get it. I like they're sharpening you, but it hurts so bad that you're like, I love them, but I have this. You know, not a hate, but it's like that. That has not been our relationship, though, Terry. You must be talking about one of your other pastors, right? <laughs> never been our relationship. <laughs> never. But I think people don't want to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Because they don't want to be uncomfortable. So anytime somebody forces you to yeah. do something without your, you think your approval or your letting, it's like. See, but that's, a, but that's right there. You say anytime someone forces you. Yeah, that's not forced. It's not forced, though. Because it's not your original choice. See, a lot of times we forget we have a choice. But I know what you're saying, and, and what you're saying, when you feel someone's coming at you with something that you didn't fully acknowledge, agree with, or consented to in the first place. Right. Even though you're crying out to God, but the way God delivered it to you, is like, oh, yeah, this is being forced on me. Right? Why didn't God consult with me first when he told you, you know? Uh, well, the force is you're forced to make a choice. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, you're forced now. The choice is in your face. And you love this person, so you've got to make a choice, and you well, and the, and the being of the real choice is because you, you, you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Being double-minded is a very uncomfortable place. It, being just not making a choice is a choice. Right. Yeah. And it's an uncomfortable choice because you don't feel at peace yeah. until you make a clear choice. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's why people keep talking about the same thing over and over again because they have not made a decisive choice and stuff with it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's kind of like when you were saying the other day, man, you, you, um, you, make a ch you, you make a choice to do these things, you know, um, you, but if you don't choose to do those, then don't do them. Mm-hmm. You know, and then if, if your heart's not in it, then why do it? You know, because True. Because it's only do the things that your heart's in, and so if somebody's asking you to do something you really don't want to do, you don't do it because you love that person and that's the only reason you do it. Right. You know, you, you, you have to know that you're comfortable mm -hmm. doing what you're going to do. And either decision comes with consequences, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. Then why do you got a little consequence. So if you make that choice, but what do you, you just said something, Kim, when he said that. What did you say? Don't complain about it. Okay, the, you are the person who is affecting. Yeah. Which one? You're either going to do or not do, but don't complain about what your decision is. And that's the word, right? But we do it anyway. <laughs> These are right. 
Ah, I can't believe Pastor Eric, you asked me to pass and pray. Ah, you know, and it, it is one hour to the fast, right? <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> Lord, angry. angry, right? Man, it's the devil. He's the devil making me not eat. <laughs> right? Like I'm not doing it too and I haven't done it, right? <laughs> that don't matter. It's, it's about me right now. That's it. That's it. If you're come on. Right. Yeah, oh my gosh. Girl. Pastor Eric gets on my last nerves. I had my mind and my mouth all fixed for some food today. And he throws a fast on me. Now I'm offended. Man, I'm <laughs> I was talking to Karen. Uh, it was so funny. I called her uh, and I said, Karen, are you okay? I said, I hope you're all right because I'm praying for because I see you eating food or whatever. No, oh, no, Pastor Eric. I'm excited about the fast. I was telling Miss Lisa how excited I was. I said, Karen, are, 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 yeah, are you okay? Because I see you struggling over there. Yeah, I got a taco plate in the backseat of my car. I'm <laughs> I said, are you going to eat it? I'm still debating about it. <laughs> because of who you're in front of, it, it dictates what you say, right? When y'all talk to me, y'all have your holiest voices on and most godliest conversation with me. Oh, Pastor Eric, I was just thinking about you the other day and what you said. And I was praying and I loved it and it was fantastic. And then you talked to one of your friends. Oh, my gosh, girl, Eric is killing me with these messages. You know, because there's different conversations with different people. And I'm sitting on the phone going like, oh, Lord, save me. Save me, please. Because I'm like, OK, now let's get to the real stuff. <laughs> Do you see? And I appreciate the respect you guys have for me. And it's all fun. So but but I can see it. <laughs> so. So. Right, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, tell, tell them I want to know number two while you're there, Mike. <laughs> huh? Maybe say your order, please? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have so much fun with y'all. It's so fun. Just give it up, right, Cody? Just give it up. <laughs> all right, Pastor, I'm bringing you number two over there. Right, this is, we'll start the fast t tomorrow, okay? We'll just, let's go ahead and eat break bread. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to Elder Mike. Don't listen to Elder Mike, guys, okay? You don't want me come looking for you. <laughs> you don't want me looking for you. <laughs> All right, what are you saying, man of God? No, I'm just saying, you know, somebody up there said something that's probably sounds for that. It's here in the new word of God. He said, if you love me, Right, and that's what it comes about following God, right? Get it for Brother Cody. That was good. And he, we watched him struggle with that from day one, right, Mike? We have watched Cody battle with the double mindedness. I mean, he was a poster child for double mindedness. And to watch him be breakthrough, his marriage to be great, his, his, his ministry to be growing, and for his business with his wife to be prosperous, I mean, it is a total 180 from where he was 
when we first met Cody into where he is today because he's done the work. And that's the hard thing when you when you are aware of it. Now you have to do the work and your emotions still are with the stronghold instead of with the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. What you got to say, Terry? OK, Cody, we got you. We got you, brother. We got you. Good job. Cody. Good job. <laughs> OK. Yes, sir. Right. From God, because I don't think about that at all uh, anymore. Like to yeah. me, the only person who is pushing me to do anything is God. Like, mm-hmm. and it's through conviction. Right. And it's like I know what He's, what I gotta do, and that's where the <laughs> where the battle is. It's not with you speaking His His word to me. Like I've never. I know we joke about it, and I know you know that I never have had that with you, but it's always been. Because I know you're right. I know you're speaking God's words, and I know that that the conviction in my heart is what you know sends me. Track star around the track. He's like, that's the gunshot. I tell you, I got a word for you. Sit. <laughs> so Bill says, Lord, pow, go. She's off. <laughs> but she comes right back. <laughs> Absolutely. And it means that he loves you, right? And that's why Paul teaches don't despise the correction of God, right? Because it means that he loves you, right? Yes. And I think the thing that I struggle with personally is um, am I recognizing his voice enough versus the voice of anything else, any other distraction that mm-hmm. is on me to not be in the word enough or to not. He says, you know, my sheep will know my voice. Right. We got to reinforce it, right? Because if we don't, we'll feel weak. We'll we'll question it because we're not reinforcing what he said by moral. Right. Absolutely, that's a good woman, guy. Yes, babe. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Want them to do better and like mm-hmm. encourage them. Mm-hmm. They just won't get it until God right. reveals it. And right now, you just have to be, you have to have that grace because God True. There it is. All the time. I, mean, I need to know where they are. Come back, Christian. Teach us. There, I come back. Like, he tells you something right now, he'll give you a prophetic word for the future. And you're uh-huh. like, I'm on it now. But he's just like, sweetheart, you're not ready for it yet. Preach, mama. Well, yeah, and that's what I said, Terry. Y'all to the races. I know you coming back because I can see you come around that track. And I'm like, okay, she's coming. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Same thing, Terry. Ah. You know? <laughs> Same thing, Terry. Ah. You know, so yeah, that's what it is. And that's why, you know, I think I think one of the most beautiful things that, you know, when I have my conversation with Giselle and, you know, uh, Kathleen, a lot of you guys who are really close to me, um, is when you guys have seen me go from, you know, you watch me how I am with people. Because when you're not in it, you, you're you you're very analytical about the person receiving, right? Why don't they just listen? Why don't they just listen? But then when you're in the, when you're in the seat, the hot seat, you, you do the same exact thing. Oh, you know. So, but they see how patient I am, how tender I am, how understand I am, how I stick with the person. Does that make sense? Because I was there too. You see, but she's so right. You have to have that love and compassion when it comes to training and helping other people hear the things of God and not take offense to it. And it's hard to do. It's a place you got to grow to. That's huh? That's our that is. That it, it definitely is because we can lose the person because, like, like she said, they are in a state they're not really getting it, right? Mm-hmm. And so you got to be passionate. Yes, yes, Giselle. And, and I guess something that for me was and still comes back is the pearls to swine, right? Right. Minister and love or whatever, but at some point it's like, okay, yeah. I told you fifty thousand times, right. and you're still yeah. going back to whatever. And, uh-huh. and for me, it's like really hard to. Right, because that, that's part of your that's part of the word, but it it, it matches your personality too, right? And so, what part do you act on? Part do you don't? And that's the conversation I had with Michael yesterday. I was telling him about, you know, it's okay to have expectations, but the emotion behind my expectations I've taken down. Yes. So I still expect you guys to be and do what we teach and train here, but without the the corresponding emotion, if you don't do it, I get all hurt and disappointed and upset with you. 
Does that, does that make sense? And so I have the expectation as your pastor, but my emotions behind it is really low. So meaning that if and when the disappointment comes, I'm not all like, ah, you know, like I used to be and just done with you. Right. But at that point, I have to let you work it out, figure it out and draw back a little bit to your point. So that way I don't find myself in offense because I'm, I'm looking at what you're constantly doing and not changing. You know, yeah. Right. Praise God. Mm-hmm. God keeps telling me, I need you to love them just like you would love my your own children, your right. own blood, your own mm-hmm. flesh and blood. And I'm like, God, even I'm just like, okay, because there's really you can't argue with that. He's like, love them just like they're your own, your own, like your own flesh and blood. Right, because we can do it, right? Because think about a baby, right? We don't get mad at babies. Yeah. But so that shows that you can love people unconditionally. If you can love an animal or a car or yourself or whatever, then you can love everybody like that. You have the capability to love them like that. You just choose not to because of your expectations. But you can because you've done it. And that's why he tells you he don't tell you anything that you cannot do. But you choose not to. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is like. Um. For me, is the struggle is not that I get offended or whatever. It's just like I, I feel sad for the person because you see them struggling in their rut and they right. don't want to get out of that. But one thing that helped me that, that you showed me is there's 5,000 other people that do want that. And yeah, to our point, it's timing. And then Mike and I talked about, yeah, some people may not ever get it. There were people who saw Christ, knew it was him, still walked away. And yeah, that is sad, right? Over. Right. But you have to be okay because Jesus told him from the get go, listen, you preach this gospel, some will receive it. Yeah. They'll be saved and some won't. Well, they'll be condemned. But you keep preaching it. And so that's the part of ministry that's hard when you get into it because you feel personally responsible if somebody is not doing something that you're teaching and leading. You know what I'm saying? Even though as much as I try to live right in front of y'all, teach all these things, demonstrate the spirit of God, whatever the case is, it's not going to equate to people still getting it and growing and changing. You know what I'm saying? Even though I try to remove as many hindrances as I possibly can, people will still make their choices. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. It it all comes down to it's their choice. Absolutely. Like I said from the get-go, yeah. We have to recognize that. But it's hard because we understand and we know what God has done in our lives. Right. And how much better it is. Right. But unless they have a teachable spirit. Yes. And they want to follow through Yes. Yeah. It will never work. And so right. you just have to leave them where they are. Right. If they want it, they'll come back. Absolutely. Because God doesn't force himself on us. Yes, woman. Well, God. The Lord showed me and helped really set me free understanding this that the seeds that I sow, someone else is coming right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. True. There's so many dynamics to this, right? Yeah. yeah. So let go and trust God with that. Okay. Praise God. Yes, man, God. That's it. That's right, Kim. I read something recently um, that God is able to clean this fish. Amen. And we got to remember that God is still in the equation, guys. And, and to my point, my wife, he would do it in his time. And yes, yes, I'm Lord. I was just going to say, sometimes we have to look through the plank in our own eyes. Yeah. Because you, yeah. Think, you think that they should be doing something, you got your own stuff. That's true. Yeah, you do. You do. Absolutely. So good. And I just want to open that up so that we can have dialogue about that because we all to a degree deal with this. Or know somebody who does whatever. And this is what's keeping us up. So we get our folks in the right place instead of just keep imagining things and stay our focus over there. And we're so far away from God. It's ridiculous. You know, so we got to get a hold of that. Right. Amen. Okay. so in James chapter one, verse two through eight, uh, this is where we, you know, we find the scripture double minded. Right. Uh, This is the NIV. James chapter one, verse two through eight. And we all know the scripture. Uh, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Look at that. Consider it pure joy. Would you read? Would you consider it? Man, oh man, when I tell people that, somebody tells me something, oh, Pastor Eric, they did this to me. Okay, well, let's consider something. Consider. What I consider is you need to understand that they're attacking me, you know? (laughs) You're my pastor. (laughs) <laughs> right but look at that he starts out with consider it Consi- consider it no I know what happened I know they tried to hurt me I know what the deal is 
You can't talk me out of that. Mm-hmm. Consider it. Woo, that's a dangerous word, right, Lord? Yeah. Consider it. Mm-hmm. Could you consider something? Oh, people hate when I say that to them. They hate it because they want to be mad and offended and hold on to that. They want to be. It's a it is. Right. Consider it. Right. Because we know that God works everything together for our good. We know that, but we haven't possessed it. Amen. Does that make sense? Consider it, period, with my brother says, whenever, look at that, whenever, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know it, being Christians, you know better. <laughs> That the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Amen. Meaning God's trying to get you to be consistent. God's trying to get you to, he's trying to get you to release the spirit of God in you to show you the manifestation of what's in front of you, but you give up. Do not become weary in, why do you say don't become weary? Because you will get tired of doing what's right. You will feel like doing what's right is no longer what's right. I mean, you change your stance, change your position. If you change one workout in the gym, you'd be sore like never before in your life. Do you see? <laughs> see, are these things resounding? See, we know it, but we don't know it. Do you see? Because we're not, we're not bringing it to our life. We can tell the next person this, but we're not taking hold of it. We let it fly out the handle when, I, when we get offended, right? Amen. Do you see? Okay, hold on, Mama. I know. I know. And it says, let... Allow, permit, perseverance, finish its work. Let the Holy Spirit finish. Let him finish the surgery. Let him finish the deliverance. Let him finish the change. Let him finish the process. Let him bring the rain, Noah. Keep building the ark. Throw down the staff, Moses, so he can change to a snake. Go back to Egypt. Do you see? Let him finish. Let him finish. On the cross, he said, it is completed. Now, the whole world did what they could to him. He became, he knew this and became sin, and yet he still died on his own terms. He said, now that is finished, into your hands I commit my spirit. He died on his own terms. Come on. He didn't die when they, come on, guys. They did everything. That was ordained to happen to him, and he still died when it was time to hide. Not by the hands of man, but when it was his appointed time. He said, now I choose to die. Even though my body's out of blood, it's out of water, it's beating unrecognizable. They did the worst to me. Okay, I'll die now. And you got the alpha version. That was a beta version of Jesus. You got the alpha version of Jesus living inside of you. That was the beta version. That was the lamb. You got the risen king living in you. See, when you have an awareness of that, you you just don't talk any kind of way. Do do you see what I'm saying? You just, when you're aware of that and you encourage and live by that, you see the impossible. You see what the scripture says, you see it in your own life. It becomes a a daily thing. It becomes a night. Like, we're spoiled here. Right? Because you go outside these walls to a lot of places, it's pretty dry. And we're like, Oh, something's right, right here. Do you see? Because the spirit is not at liberty. Do you see? But we're in a Bible where the spirit is free. Right? And we see things like we did today. People feel the Holy Spirit right there. Do you see? But that's when you get a hold of your mind and let God have it is when you see those things. Okay? Uh, so, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be so that you may be, so that you may be mature. So when you come into a mature mindset, then you will be complete, lacking nothing. So when you say I'm broke, people don't know in the realm of the spirit that's a negative thing to say. Even though you're describing your current condition, it's a negative thing in the realm of the spirit. Do you, do you see? Because what did you say? Don't worry about your life. But then you find yourself worried. You find yourself anxiety. That's natural. But then you just keep confessing. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm not going to have none. This always happens to me. I never have money. You're just cursing and cursing and cursing and telling the enemy to Kim's poor and prepare for the sword. Here you go. You can have it. Now think about it. Think about it. Uh, Frederico, come here. That's my Jesus. Yeah, he's, he's ready. He stayed ready.
They're always there. Okay, Pam, we'll come in. Good, brother. Stay right from me, okay? Yes, sir. So I want to go back to the, the, the illustration we did a month ago. You know, it's the same thing. Now think about it. Now, now, Thelma, don't be mad at me, but you're going to play the role of the enemy today, okay? Okay. <laughs> but we know you're a sweet angel. We know. But just for illustration's sake, okay? Now, Satan been the king of this world, the god of this world, right? He has everything in his possession, right? He offered Jesus the kingdoms of this world. He offered him everything, right? Now, what did Jesus have? Possession-wise? Nothing. Nothing. Right, he sandals. sandals. Right, the clothes on his back. He had nothing. He had an appearance, nothing. But this guy has everything. He has the people. He has the world. He has spirit of death. He has everything in his world, his possessions. Now, why would he be bothering Jesus if Jesus didn't have anything? Right. He had the Lord. He had his body. Do you see? Come on. Are y'all catching this? Yeah. So why would a guy who has some of the stuff that you want, the money, the fame, the wealth, the this, why would he be here tempting this man who apparently has physically nothing? Because what? Because he has something that's greater than this world. Do you see? He has something greater. That's why he's here. Out of all the stuff that he has, he doesn't have this. He lost this. He covets this. But if he doesn't understand this, and when he comes to tempt you, you will give it up. What profits a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Your spirit is the most valuable thing you have. Your, your covenant with God is the most valuable thing you have because it will produce everything this clown thinks he possesses. But if you don't understand that, you will always exchange the greater for the lesser. Do you understand? Yes. Do you see it? Because you're so desperate. You're desperate. You're desperate. And when you're desperate, you exchange what produces it for the manifestation of someone who already has it. But he said you're the head and not the... But you're exchanging your headship for tailship. Pull up Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Somebody read that for me. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. We'll, we'll read a few verses of that. And I want you to hear this, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter, man of God. Okay. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child. Okay, hold on. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is why maturity and perseverance is so important. Hear this. Uh huh. Now I say that the heir. Okay, the heir. Uh huh. As long as he is a child, Jesus was at the beginning of his ministry. Does not defer at all from a slave. Listen to that. Though so though he was a king, sorry, man of God. Though he was a king, but he was in the beginning stages of his kingship. The beginning stages. When when John the Baptist was his herald, when there's an announcement of a kingdom to come, there's a herald that goes forth. So John the Baptist was his herald, was announcing the new kingdom, and that's why Jesus said, "Repent, for the kingdom of." Is that what? Hand. So it is the beginning of this kingdom. Do you see? And Satan tried to cut him off in his child stage. Wow. Because wow. shortly after his 40 day visitation, Jesus started his what? Ministry. Yes. Wow. So when you get a word from God about your calling, he's going to visit you. And to get you to give up that word in exchange for these petty things that, this, that living for God is going to produce for you. Come on. I was broke three years ago. Yes. But I served God. I stayed faithful. My whole life was broken. My finances, my marriage, my, my life, everything was broken. But you're the heir of the kingdom. Do you see? Yes. That's not the case anymore. But it was. Yes. Do you see? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead and start the scripture over again, man of God. It's okay. Right. But it's under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Okay, so who was Jesus guarding to? His, his parents, God, and John the Baptist. They were the ones preparing him, getting him ready. See, you have to have people ahead of you who get you ready. But you don't listen to nobody. You don't, want, you don't have a teachable spirit. Wow. Pastor, God's trying to tell me something. He's trying to correct me. He's trying to get on to me. He don't, ever see, he don't see things my way. I'm here to grow you up. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. 
I know my assignment. You're confusing my assignment with your feelings. Because you're a child, you're an heir, but you're in a child state. So there's an appointed time, as my wife said, that it will come. So being a person who's walked with your king and your king himself has assigned me to help you until the appointed time. Read it again, man of God. But for I say that the heir as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Doesn't differ from a slave. Though he is master of all. Though he's master of all. But is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. So when you receive Christ, you possess everything. Okay. Yes. But because you don't see it as a child, like if I tell my son, take him to Dave and Buster's, oh, he's ready to go right now. And if the day goes on, he's, he's going to get attitude with me. Why? Because he I didn't take the dating buses that day. But I said, okay, so I'll take you Friday. Oh, I, I thought you meant today. Uh -huh. Why I gotta wait? Why? Why are you why are you telling me now? You know how I am about that kind of stuff. Why would God tell me that and not do it right now? He knows me. <laughs> Friday. I can't wait to Friday. Do you see? As long as he is a child, he's no different than a slave. Do you see? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, keep reading, man of God. Yes. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Okay, when we were children. Doesn't mean it was true. It's because of our understanding in an immature place. We were underneath bondage. Give a picture of your from behind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were underneath the clutches of the enemy. False teaching, not knowing God, not being saved, not having salvation. We were when we were children, we were immature, we were babies, we were still need the clutches of the saved. That's why people keep getting resaved and reaffirming again. I need to rededicate my life to God. I need to get rebaptized. I need to do all this re, 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 re. Do you see? Because you're still in the state of a child. So you're thinking if I go back to doing my childhood stuff, I'm gonna feel better. You're repenting all the time. You're you're yeah. you're saying I'm sorry all the time. You're laying for the God going a seven day fast every time you make a mistake. Yeah. You said I'm not going to do this this week, and then some triggers you go back to doing what you said you weren't going to do anymore, and then you find yourself crying, repenting for the Lord, trying to pray that you don't go to hell. You're not receiving. That's a child. Yeah. The Bible says though the righteous fall seven times, yet again they what? Yeah. You get up. You don't confuse the choice in your flesh with your salvation. But he sees that and he plays on it. Because you, you know you're called to that throne, but you haven't fully understood it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So he's playing on your immaturity. Yeah. And that's what keeps you there. Not because you're really there. Because your mind is not mature. Do you see? And then you do it so long that it becomes a party. So when somebody tells you that God's forgiven, you like, no, he hasn't. Because I'm just going to do it again. Mm. I just did it yesterday. How can God keep forgiving me? Because that's what he said. Amen. Guys, what God tells us has to be enough for us. Amen. He said, heaven and earth shall pass with my word will never remain. Well, I, will, will always remain. Yeah. Do you see? But it's not enough for us because we are feelings. I don't feel saved. I don't feel right. I don't feel like God loves me. It doesn't make it true. You got to confess what he says about how you feel. Then what you feel will become what he says. Amen. You see? When you persevere. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But when the fullness of time had come. When you grow. Uh-huh. God sent forth his son. That's it. Born of a woman. That's it. Born under the law. Uh-huh. To redeem those who were under the law. Meaning born underneath the same elements that you struggle with. He showed you how to overcome it. Amen. Uh-huh. To redeem them, those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Man, like, get out of here. That's get out of here, say. <laughs> there we go. That's this it. is my son and who I'm well pleased. Yes. Do you see? And that's what he quoted to Satan. Like, right. G Satan changed out there. He said, if you are the son of God, yeah. if you are, prove it to me. Now, God had already said it. Yeah. John the Baptist had already said it. Yeah. The prophets of all had already said it. Then here he comes trying to create doubt. So when you get a word from God in a childlike state, that's what he's doing. He's trying to create doubt. Mm -hmm. 
Don't listen to us. And that's why you need people who are more mature to protect you until you get it. Amen. 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 And what was the rest of that scripture, man? And because you are sons, uh -huh. God has sent forth the spirit of his son Look at into that. your hearts. You're no different than Jesus, and he gave you his spirit to help succeed. What do you think God put his spirit in you for? To fail? Amen. You think Jesus died so you can live a defeated life? Do you really believe that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. Uh-huh. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Look at that. Praise God. Y'all get it for the word. Thank you, guys. Look at that. Do you see that? But as long as he remains a child, he's no different than a slave, even though he really is. He's no different. Because his mindset. Do you see? It's not about when you possess it, you give God glory. You give God glory when he tells you that's what you are. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you see? That's what faith is. It's the substance of things and the evidence, the proof of what's not. But yet you're waiting, you're holding your praise until something shows up. It's not faith, guys. That's not the kingdom we come from. we got to change that. You celebrate because God said so. Consider it. You see that? Now, do you see it? So, if it, verse 5 and back in James, if any of you lacks wisdom, if you lack wisdom, if you lack it, you can what? You should ask God, who gives generally to all without finding fault. When you come to God saying, I don't know what to do, he's not blaming and coming at you like, what is your, he, he's not fault finding. But yet, because it's your sin nature, you think he is. But he's telling you right here he's not. Do you see? So, thank you, Lord. Who gives generally to all without fault finding, and it will be given to you. It will be given to you. That baby asked to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and she got it today. Amen. But when you ask, you, you this is your part now. But when you ask, you must what? Believe. Okay? You must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea. Blown and tossed by the wind, like the baby, right? Okay? And such a, uh, and such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. The baby, right? Put everything in their mouth. Put the keys in the mouth, the shoes in the mouth, food in the mouth. The cockroach in the mouth. Sorry, I keep bringing up cockroach. But but the baby puts everything because the baby doesn't know. So it, it, it does everything by tasting. That's his, that's his level of standard. So the minute I give you a word about something, I say, okay, God says you're going to do this great thing, great thing. And you're like, all right, yeah, that's great. I'm going to, I'm called to the throne. And then somebody else tells you, you're not going to do anything. Oh. I'm not going to do anything. Somebody says, oh, you're a good person. I'm a good person. And you have all these opinions that you're just swimming through. Uh, so when I come back and tell you, hey, you're going to do this, do that. Well, that's not what this person said. That's, what that, that's not what this person said. That's not what my kid said. That's not what my husband said. That's not you checking with everybody. Yeah. Do you see? Mm -hmm. And that's the problem we have because we don't want to miss something. We're so careful. We're trying to do everything so right that we don't let righteousness prevail. Yeah. You're so fearful of making a mistake. That God can't even do anything with that. It's okay because he's with you. So you're over contemplating, overthinking everything. You, you do that with everything. Indecisive about everything. Because yeah. he's like, if you don't get to happen and check, you do it with everything. And so even the smallest, most simplest things become the biggest task. Amen. Nice. And if things are clearly simple, you have to make them complicated. It's like, okay, all we're going to do is pray today, yo. Okay, when you say pray, do you mean like pray like dinner time pray, or do you mean like pray like for the nation, or do you mean pray? No, we're gonna pray. Just stay there. We're gonna pray. Yeah, I get that, Pastor. But pray like how in tongues, not in tongues. Do I need to interpret if I speak in tongues? And do you see? And it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And I'm telling you, just be ready. 
just wait for the appointed time. And your mind is just going way left. Do you see? <laughs> and everything becomes complicated. So listen to this. Okay, so in the New Living Translation of uh, verse 8, double mind, it says, their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. The Holman Christian Standard Bible says an indecisive man is unstable in all his ways. Indecisiveness. Uh, the God's Word translation says a person who has doubts is thinking about two different things at the same time and can't make up his mind about anything. Ooh, that's so true. Which one is that? The, uh, the God's Word translation. The GWT. Meaning you have two God's Word translation. No, it, oh, it's, it's a person who has doubt is thinking about two different things at the same time. Meaning for every positive you're thinking of is negative counter. For every white thing you think about the black thing. For every good thing you're thinking about the, the bad thing. And you stay here. Because you can find something to correspond neutralize that, that thought you're having. You say yes, Lisa. Yeah, but it's, a, it's the nature of good and evil at its core. It is. Does that make sense? Yes. That's what happened when we ate the fruit. We, we became double-minded. Yeah. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, the devil makes us yes. yeah, he's going to add to it, right? But just the nature of good and evil in us, without his assistance, we still deal with that, right? Because it starts with our decision-making. Yes, he aids in that, but at the core of it, it's the nature of good and evil in all of us. Uh huh. On the, the Passion Translation... It says when you are half-hearted and wavering, mm -hmm. it leaves you unstable. Can you really expect to receive anything from the Lord when you're in that condition? So it doesn't mean that he didn't release and give you something. You just can't recognize it. No. Or you can't hold on to it to Kim's point, the parable of the sword. You don't fully receive it. And when the enemy comes, you relinquish it. Yes. When temptation comes, you relinquish it. When testing comes, you give it up. Fear comes, you delete it. You let it go. Do you see and then in, uh, in the Webster's uh, Bible translation, it says, a, a, a man unsettled in his opinion is unstable in all his ways. Mm. Unsettled. Mm. Uh, the Webster's Bible translation. And what, what verse is it? This is verse 8 of uh, James 1, chapter 1. It's the same in verse, but we're just doing a tra different translations. Uh, yeah, the Webster's Bible translation says, a man unsettled in his opinions is unstable in all his ways. Such a one is a man of two minds. Undecided in every step he takes. Everything he does, he's unsure about. Even the things he's sure about, he's unsure about. Wow. Yes, I'm a pastor, but I don't know if I'm your pastor, but I, maybe I'm not your pastor, but, but I am a pastor, but maybe I'm not. But you know what? You tell me what I am to you. But I'm a pastor. <laughs> Do you see? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the Young's Literal Translation, the Young's Literal Translation says a two-souled man is unstable in all his ways, D.C. So, so how do we overcome being double-minded? What, what are some ways we can overcome double-mindedness? How are some of you guys breaking through being double-minded about something? Speak the word. Yeah, get back to work. Speak the word, okay. What, first recognizing it. Uh-huh, and what else? Renew your mind. What else? Ask God for wisdom. What else? Take your thoughts captive. Okay, what else? Ask for intercession. What else? Act on the word. Believe and not doubt. Okay, anything else? Act on the word. Act on the word. There you go. Because you don't, you're deceiving yourself. That's right. Right? Praise God. Thank you, Sue. Um, okay, to Frederick Good Point. Number one. First, to change anything, we need to first be aware and recognize it. You can't change something unless you're aware of it. That's right. Okay, number one, how we change double mind is we need to become aware that we are. Okay, so this is what we're going to want to do. I want you to write down or type, what are you double minded about? I want everyone to do this. What are you double minded about? What is something that you're double minded about that you can, that, that's keeping you stuck, you haven't made any progress in? What is keeping you there? What are the two corresponding thoughts you have about this same subject? Okay, I want everybody to spend time doing it. Now, please don't stare at me. Do this. This is for you. Because we're here to grow, guys. This is a training ministry.
So ask God, God, what am I double-minded about? What am I having a hard time with? What is the thing that I'm feeling stuck in right now that I can't seem to make a sound decision about and move forward? Because we're going to work through that today, okay? This is the exercise we're going to do today. So that we could see whatever you, whatever you hear, you may not remember. Whatever you see, you some will remember. Uh, I bet. Uh, but whatever you do, you 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 won't forget it. You understand how to do it, okay? So that's why we're doing church. So write or type down. Uh, what are you being double-minded about, okay? Because like we read, the ultimate key in verse 4 is uh, persistence, right? Okay, so the word of God tells the whole fast talk confessions of faith and perseverance. Okay, so number two, we have to change our thought and make a singular thought. So I want you to pray, what is the decision you need to make? Out of those two, which one is the one that you know is the right decision? Can you repeat that, please? Which one of the two that you wrote down uh, was making you double minded? Which one is the the one that you truly desire? Not the one you fear, the one you truly desire. Which one is the one you truly desire? Make a decision. We're doing it right now. Yeah, so let's make a choice between the two thoughts, right? How long will we stand between two what? Opinions. That has become decision time. Okay. Okay. We done that, guys? Yes? Or we still some who needs more time? Okay. Because this is important, guys. Let me let me tell you something. I would not be who I am today if I didn't if I didn't make the hard decisions. I had to make a lot of hard decisions. To get to where I am today. A lot of hard ones that cost me a lot of stuff. You see? So you don't get here just by observation. Mm -hmm. You get here by doing the work. Okay? I don't walk in confusion. I don't. You don't have to. God's not the art of what? But why are we walking in confusion? If he's not the art of it, then where is it coming from? Every good and perfect gift comes from God. So we need to make our mind up. And we got to trust God that he can still work in it. Even if it's the wrong choice, he still can work in it. Okay? But we got to break that cycle, guys. we got to challenge that pattern of thought and have it. Okay? That's what we're doing right now. We're doing a pattern interrupt. Okay? All right? Okay? All right. So, number three. Now we have to change our behavior. Okay? I mean, to this point, we got to act on it, right? So now that we made the choice... We have to add some reinforcing action to it. So what physical changes are you going to commit to start doing today? Is what you need to type or write down. What corresponding actions to support that thought are you going to start doing today? Because you got to reinforce that decision now. Okay, some of you guys say hearing the word, yes. Some of you said... Do acting on the word. Yes. Some of you said changing your thoughts. Yes. All those things are correct. What actions can I do to reinforce and encourage this decision I made now? Okay. You guys have a little time to do that. Because you got to do things that support with your decision or you'll go right back to being in that. That low, low, being double-minded, okay? You got to do some things. Like if I want to be healthier and be in better shape, I have to start, I have to first get a plan together, make a decision, maybe see a nutritionist or a therapist or a friend of mine who works out. There's some action I have to take to encourage that decision I made to change my, my health. Do you see? You can't just say I'm going to change my health and then live off the knowledge of wanting to do that, right? You got to, right, Zach? <laughs> okay. Um, because James 1, 2, 2 tells us to be doers of the word and not hearers only, okay? All right, number four. We need to add additional thoughts, ideas that continue to support our primary thoughts. So it means now if that, that you make the decision and now you're adding some extra steps to it, add some additional things to reinforce it, right? So you get, uh, you, you look at some YouTube videos on eating healthy, uh, you ask a friend who's in fitness, okay, hey, can you help me clean out my pantry and my refrigerator? Because I got all nothing but ice cream in there. 
you know, <laughs> and junk food. I don't want to throw it away, but I need to because I made a commitment to do this today. Cost me a lot of money, I know, but I just went grocery shopping, but I need to get rid of it. Do you see, it's going to come with a cost. Because the biggest reason why we don't stick with the thing we should do because the pain. And we convince ourselves that the negative is the right thing because we grow comfortable with that. Do you see? I know I, I like I asked the point, I, I don't, I don't want to smoke, but the other side is, in hindsight, she, it, there's a process she believes it helps her with her anxiety, her stress, and things of that nature. Do you see? There's reasons why we do the things that we know we shouldn't do or don't want to do that we justify, that keeps us there. Even though we know the benefits or, or the, 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 the cost of it is worse than what we say is benefiting us. Amen. Do you see? Okay. All right. Or at, okay. Uh, number five, right? Yeah. Okay. So get into relationship and community with people who will encourage and support your decision. Get into community with people who are heading in the same direction. Okay, that's why there's an atmosphere of faith there all the time, because we're all like minded about the scriptures and what we believe about God. So when somebody comes to the environment, it gets a hold of them. Right, Zach? <laughs> Zach was cool. He asked me a question yesterday for, uh, his, you know, um, he's in seminary. So he was asking me a question about how did everything in his ministry come to being the way it is and just picking my brain about it. And I never really thought about that. But I said, because we practice the gospel. If somebody's in need. Whatever that need is, if it's love or finances or whatever we have to give, we give it. And then that person gets exposed to it, tells someone else and they bring them here. Right. And, and it just happens organic because he was talking about how diverse we are and how, you know, different people, different dynamics and backgrounds come to this ministry. I say, yeah, because we have a limit to a certain bias, a certain perception of person. We 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 open it up to everyone. Right. Because everyone needs something from God. Amen. Amen. And everybody comes to give instead of just looking to receive only. And so when people who come to here to give, there will always be plenty for people who were joining us for the first time or whatever. Does that make sense? Like Dr. Tammy again today, she's received healing. She's received her tongues. She's receiving because we all come here to give. Amen. Just like the believers in the book of Acts, right? Amen. Amen. So get into community. So, OK, God, lead me to the place you want me to be. The people who in here, who outside, where can I go to get support in this? Because I'm not strong in this yet, but I know I need to do this, right? Okay. Uh, Wait, what was six again? Five. Not there yet. That five. Sorry. No, that's five. Yeah, and 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 number and number five was the last one. Okay. So get in a relationship and community with the people uh, who will encourage and support your decision. Okay. Uh, Hebrews ten twenty five says, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Okay. All right. So because trying to do this alone, it starts that way, but it's not healthy to keep that up. You need people to walk with you and help you and encourage you and keep you accountable. You need that. The Bible says two is better than one, right? Amen. Amen. All right. OK, so y'all stand with me. OK. And like we said earlier, it comes down to a choice, guys. No one's forcing anything on you. This is a choice. Bottom line, you have a choice. Because when you feel like you don't have a choice, you feel forced. See, the people resist change. And if you don't make the choices in the midst of change things you can't control, then you'll be a victim of something you could have been a victor of. Because you, your, 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 your choice not to choose. Do you see? Um, but the biggest reason we stay double-minded because of the fear of the negative consequences. You know, we want to avoid pain, displeasure, uncomfortableness. We believe because God is God, he can make it so clear that there's nothing that's going to hurt or prick us. And then so we we project that. We project that, right? But if you look at John chapter 16, he tells them they're going to take you away and do these things to you on account of me. They're going to beat you. They're going to kill you guys. They're going to do these things to you. Jesus told the disciples this in John 16. But he said, be a good Jared. Why? Because I will become the world. And that came from Jesus. <laughs> Following him. Do you see? So, and I really just want us to pray about this, guys. So, so close your eyes with me. And we're making a commitment today to break these strongholds of being double-minded, and we're going to be single-minded. It doesn't mean you're not going to have your little things to say and your little thoughts and that struggle still. It just means that you made a choice to keep going forward nonetheless. And God will give you more revelation. He will give you wisdom about it. Trust me, there were times I wanted to divorce my wife. I've told her that. I've said it. I meant it. I got the papers. I was so serious. Do you see? I was so serious about it. 
Uh, my mind, I felt like my mind was made up about it. Do you see? Well, it's not even about God saying no. It was my decision. Do you see? I was struggling with two corresponding thoughts. God says no about a lot of things. We still do it. But it was about me making a decision because I was waiting between loving my wife and divorcing my wife, being married to my wife, divorcing my wife, because the onslaught of everything that was going on was just too much for me. Because, see, a lot of times what happens is you guys get wounded in your spirits and you don't understand it. So you're trying to push past, push through, and it ain't happening. It's, think, it's getting things worse. The, the very thought of that person hurts you just irks you. And you don't, you try to forgive and you still feel unforgiven. You try to love and you still hate. You, you, you try to move fat, past it and you can't because you've been wounded in your spirit. That's why. So it takes a higher principle. You have to go in the spirit realm to be healed of what's plaguing you in the natural. You just can't muscle through this. You can't just get over it. It wounded you emotionally. It wounded you spiritually. And that's what's keeping you stuck. So the way you heal is by living and by practicing the principle of God. Jesus said, love them who hate you. And despitefully use you, he said, then you'll be like your father in heaven. Not that they will change. Then you will be like your father in heaven. So the challenge was when you're in a relationship with someone, I want you guys in relationships to hear me. They are there as an agent of change for you. Yeah. They are close enough to pull out your impurity that have always been there. You're praying that they stop exposing things about you. That's still idolatry. God's like, no, you need to get a higher revelation of me than what they're doing to you. And you have not made my word the master. They're exposing what you really call God that you don't know. So when they're able to keep you angry, able to keep you in offense, able to keep you in these places of being stuck, it's because God's word is not gaining the master. It is not because of this person. It's because they're exposing in you where you have not allowed God to be God. That is the truth. Wow. So because I kept complaining about my wife in my marriage. God, she's hurting me. God, she's cheating on me. God, she's doing this. God, this is wrong. God, da, da, da. God's like, good, because in your weakness, my strength is made. Yeah. Now you're going to understand the scripture you've been quoting your whole life. Because you've just been quoting. It's been up here and not in here. Now it's going to get in here. Because I can do all things do that. Why do you think I don't pay attention to gospel when people talk about me? The only reason they talk about me is because they covet what I have. Amen. They think I'm on some value. That's why they talk about me. They wouldn't waste their time talking about me if I wasn't. I don't pay attention to that. Again, that's and I'm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see, yeah. Jesus said, "What do people say that I am?" Well, say I'm saying you this. So they were paying attention to everything. Yeah. He said, "Now, all right, now who do you say I am? You're the Messiah. I blessed are you, because you didn't listen to the gospels. You listen to the Spirit. Yeah. Now we can talk about some deeper things. Yeah. Do you see? People who walk in the Spirit find it very hard to talk about talk to people who function more so the natural." Yeah. There are things I want to share and talk to you guys about, but I really can't because what people are functioning. Wow. So true. Do you see? I don't have these conversations about God. I, I don't. <laughs> Do you see? And that's why Jesus got Peter back in line. Because he said, you're my disciple. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get back in line, boy. You're feeling yourself now because you got a word. Now you're just going around thinking you're a prophet now because you got one word. No. You're still my disciple. Get back in line. Because you mess up when you try to teach your teachers. Do you see? Because it's your perception. Okay? But I had a strong call of divorce, 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 divorce. Do you see? And God challenged me. He said, well, what did I command you to do and what did I said to you, son? And, and God told me how my marriage would be three years out. And I ran from it. He told me it would be like it. And I still ran from it. Because I needed to grow. There was something in me that this situation was pulling out that was lying dormant the whole time. That no other situation pulled out. Wow. And that's what the situation's doing for you. He told Moses, look, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't know me this way. That's why the children have stayed in bondage all those 400 years. Because they didn't have the revelation of God that Moses had. So that's why they stayed where they stayed. If you don't, if you don't grow past your baby knowledge of God, you will stay where you are. Not because that's God's choice, because your choice of not being unwilling to grow up and consider it pure joy. Do you see? You are where you are because of your choices. Not because of the devil. Not because of God. Not because of your spouse. You. That is the bottom line truth. You are where you are because of your choices. Now, if they influence those choices, whatever. But you made a choice. So, now I see my wife, and when things come up, I'm not offended by it anymore. Jesus says, 
by no means nothing should hurt you. That's a reality. And when I first started practicing that, I still got hurt by her. But I kept persevering. I kept growing. I kept forgiving. I kept loving. And I outgrew it. So now I can love her like God loves me. Isn't that what it says? Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Christ loved the church. Now I truly can say I love her like Christ loved the church. That he gave himself. Do you see? But it's not a struggle. It's not a tick for tat anymore. It's not something I'm trying to do. It's something I understand now. And I, and I walk in. So when offenses come up, I acknowledge it, but I don't get all crazy and, oh, here's the papers divorce like I used to. Do you see? Because I grew. That's why Jesus was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. Even though they were killing him and they knew they were killing him, but he said they really don't have a real understanding of what they're doing to me. So forgive them, Father. <laughs> and see, this is what this person who's plaguing you and painting you is trying to pull out of you from God's behalf. Let them. That's why Jesus said if somebody does this to you, do this is your response. Because it's, it's, a, it's a principle that releases the power of God that grows you from the immature place. That's what you don't understand. So when I tell you something that doesn't make sense to you, you're resisting God's answer. You're looking for his answers, but it's not making sense. But you think what you've been doing is making sense, but you get it's getting worse. So do you really want God's opinion or do you want do you really want God to, in, to make happen what you think should be happening the way you're doing things? Because that's what you're really saying. You want God to do it in your immaturity instead of doing it his way. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Do you see? And that's why you're stuck. So when I found, because it feels like you're an idiot, right? So God, you mean tell me just let her say what she wants to say about me and do what she wants to do and she's my wife? Yes. Maybe you didn't hear me, God. I'm the pastor. She's my wife. She's talking about me. And that's okay with you. Yes. Okay, God. I surrender. You see? Then you grow. And then those things happen. They don't hurt you. And that's the place. That's where I want you guys to be. It's a beautiful place, God. It's a beautiful place to be in a peace that's past us. It's a beautiful place to be in where you can truly experience what the word of God says. Do you see? It's not a conceptual thing. I live in God's peace. Joanna can't hurt me. She can't. She used to, but I grew up. So if she cheats on me, I still will love her and forgive her. If she cusses at me and disrespects me in the church, I will still love her. That's the love of God. It believes the best in all things. It, it endures all things without weakening. Its hopes are faithless. Love never fails. Do you see? God has given us something, guys. It's greater than this world. He meant it, but he wants you to experience it. And your fears and insecurities was keeping you from experiencing it. See, the world thinks I'm stupid. I'm foolish. Do you see? But this is wisdom in the eyes of God. And this is what's available to all of you guys. Okay? Does that make sense? And I share so much of my personal life with you guys, not to embarrass my wife or whatever, but to help you guys, to let you know I've gone through the same things. I've been chronically sick. I grew up with, with asthma and sickle cell anemia as a baby. You see? I couldn't play sports without having an asthma attack. But now I'm a trainer and I encourage and coach people now. Do you see? It's all there, guys. But you gotta let it. You have to allow it. Stop being afraid. Trust God. Trust him. He is trustworthy. You've already committed your life to him. You've already committed your life to him. What, what, what else you hold on to? Your opinion? He got that too. Do you, your, do you not know you were bought with a price? That your life is not your what? Own. But you're making decisions independent of God. That's why you're struggling. Do you see? Paul says, what should separate from God's love? Name it. Nothing. But he, but he had the revelation. Do you see? And that's what I, I want. I want this to go from God's knowing this to possessing it. So you can take that key and unlock this, these locked doors. Change these situations. Okay? So, Father, we thank you right now, God, that no longer we're double-minded but single-minded, Father. 
Lord, we give up the thoughts of divorce. We give up the thoughts of lust. Father, we give up the thoughts of lack and poverty and strife and fear. Father, we give up the thoughts of addictions. Father, we give up the thoughts of the pain and negative consequences, God. God, we give up the thoughts of the record of wrongs, God. God, we give up the thoughts of the hopelessness and things will never change, God. God, we give up the limiting beliefs now, my age, God, my race, my gender, my this, my that, God. All these different things that keep us from being like you, Christ, God, we repent of and we give them to you now, Father. Father, you said that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. So, Father, we give the things that we've been too strong in that are not of you to you. And God, we walk in and take on the things that we're weak in that are of you, God. And God, we ask you right now to strengthen us in our weaknesses, God. We thank you by faith that you already have. And Lord, we know that, Father, that you have not given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, Father. So today, God, we will walk in the truth and we will not let back. We will let your spirit of perseverance have its work and let him finish his work, God. Holy Spirit, finish your work in us. So, Lord, we forgive those who've hurt us. We release them now, Father. Father, we've been wounded. And we are living by curse by those wounds and hurts and rejections, God. But you never rejected us. You never left us or forsaken us, God. And God, the people who rejected us, God, we know that they're hurting themselves. So, God, we speak healing for them. So you said those who hurt us, pray for them, who spitefully use us, God. So, God, we pray for those who afflicted us, God. God, we pray the best for those who've come against us, God, knowing that they need you just as much as we need you, God. So, God, we give offense and we take on the, 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 the code of love, God, and humility, Father. So, Lord, I just, I just come in agreement with all your children today, God, that they will walk worthy of the calling, God. They will continue to persevere and not give up, knowing that they have all that they wish they think they're seeking they possess, God. God, let them see the truth. Father God, we break every contract of the enemy. We break every stronghold. We come against every demonic attack in the name of Jesus Christ. Every fear of sickness, every fear of death, every fear of failure, every fear of the past, fear of the future, fear of relationships, every fear and anxiety, I rebuke it now in Jesus' name. And Father, we set fire to it now, God. God, you said there's a hope that doesn't disappoint, God. So Father, we lean on you, Father. We look to you, Father. You said you would keep me in perfect peace. Who mine has stayed on you because I trust in you, God. Father, we make a decision to completely trust you. Not our feelings trust you, not our past trust you, but we say by faith that we trust you, God. And we will continue to trust you no matter what happens, God. So, Father, I thank you, Father, that we are single minded, that we have the mind of Christ, God. So, Father, we come against confusion of all kinds, God, despair of all kinds, God, fear of all kinds, God. God, I bless your people, Father God. God, I thank you. There will be many testimonies coming from this day, Father, of your goodness when we make our minds up to choose life. We choose life today, God. And Father, I pray that we will speak life. We will bless and not curse, God. So Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the renewing of our minds today. Father, we thank you so much, God. We bless you. We celebrate the change now, God, because it's already so. And we look forward to the manifestation of that. Thank you, Lord. We thank you in advance, Father. And all God's people said, amen. Praise God.